So here in section 14.5, we are going to look at the chain rule for multivariable function. So recall the chain rule in one variable. Uh, it's dy dt is dy dx times dx dt. And remember, this is giving the rate of change of the composition function. So y depends on x, x depends on t. We want the rate of change from y to t. So the chain rule, if you've got a function z equals f of x, y, and your x depends on t and your y depends on t, and if f, t, and h are all differentiable, you can find derivatives, then dz dt is dz dx times dx dt plus dz dy times dy dt. So we've got a rate of change of z through x, and then we've got a rate of change of z through y. Now, uh, the way that you remember this formula is you've got your z here that depends on x and y. And then your x and y each depend on t. So you draw this little tree diagram showing the dependence here. And then you put uh, derivatives on the branches. Um, so this one's going to be uh, dz dx. And then down here, this is uh, dx dt. Now notice this is a regular derivative where that one's partial. And then this is dz dy partial. And then a normal derivative dy dt because it only depends on one variable. And then you multiply down the branches dz dx dx dt right there. Uh, dz dy dy dt right there. And then you add them up. So you can always draw that tree diagram to get your version of the chain rule. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we've got uh, dz dx that we need first. So let's go ahead and write out our pieces here. So dz dx, the x derivative of our function z, which is log x squared plus y squared to the fourth. So remember that with logs, inside exponents can come down in front. So that is 4 uh, log x squared plus y squared. And then remember that the derivative of a log function, if, you're, if you've got log of a function f of x, and you're doing the derivative of that, that the function goes on the bottom and its derivative on the top. So f prime over f. So you might remember that from calc 1. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got a 4 out in front. Uh, the function, inside function is x squared plus y squared. That goes on the bottom. And then its uh, x derivative goes on the top. So derivative of x squared is 2x. And the derivative of y squared is 0. So there's our first derivative. And we can simplify that as uh, 8x over x squared plus y squared. And then similarly, we can do dz dy. Uh, that's going to be 4. Uh, function goes on the bottom, x squared plus y squared. And then y derivative on the top, y derivative of x squared is 0. y derivative of y squared is 2y. So 4 times 2y is 8y. And then x squared plus y squared downstairs. And so we've got this piece, and we've got this one. So we need dx dt. So our x is cosine of t cubed. So dx dt then, this is a composition of functions in f of g of x. Uh, so remember that uh, the derivative, you've got uh, f of g of x. And you want the prime of that. You do f prime, plug in the inside, g of x. And then times g prime of x, derivative of the inside. So derivative cosine is negative sine uh, at the inside function, 2t cubed. And then times derivative of the inside, 6t squared. And then dy dt. So we got that piece. We need dy dt. And our y is t cubed plus 1 to the fifth. So just a power rule here. 5 comes down, t cubed plus 1, fourth power, and times derivative of the inside, 3t squared. And then we just plug into this formula. So then our dz dt 
in terms of x, y, and t is going to be uh, dz dx, which is right here. So 8x over x squared plus y squared times dx dt right here. So let's do bring the 6t out t squared out in front. So negative 6t squared uh, sine 2t cubed. Plus, and then we need dz dy, which is right here, 8y over x squared plus y squared, and then times our dy dt, which is right here. So let's go ahead and put those guys together out in front. So 5 times 3t three squared, 3 t squared is 15t squared, and then times t cubed plus 1 to the fourth power. And then if we wanted to, we could take our expressions for uh, x here in terms of t and y in terms of t, and we can plug them in here into our dx dt, our dx, dz dx and dy dx, and then we could get these in terms of t, then we'd have our whole derivative uh, in terms of t. Sometimes we'll need to do that, and sometimes we won't. So if you got an odd number problem, check the back of the book or read careful in directions. So what if we wanted to evaluate uh, dz dt here at t equals 0? So well, if t equals 0, then we could plug that in here. We get cosine of 0 is 1, so x is equal to 1, and then y is 0 squared plus 1, 1 to the fifth, y is also equal 1. Um, so then this derivative will be, uh, we'll just plug it in here, uh, 0, 1, and 1. So 8 on top, uh, 1 squared plus 1 squared on the bottom, and then uh, times, uh, well we're plugging in t equals 0 there, sine of 0 is 0, and negative 6 times 0 is 0, so times 0 plus, and then this will be the same. We'll have, oh, there was a times 1 there. Uh, 8 times 1 on top, and then 1 squared plus 1 squared on the bottom, times 15 times 0 squared. Oh, that one's going to be 0 also. This derivative is equal to 0. So and what does that represent? Well, that represents the instantaneous rate of change of z with respect to t at time 0.